expressing these words with a look at a fascinating African cultural retention that has been brought here from Brazil. Today, the largest concentration of black people outside Africa is to be found in Brazil, where there are some 60 million people of African descent in a population of 123 million. Though we rarely take note of it, there are over 90 million people of African descent in Central and South America alone. This includes Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, Venezuela, and Panama, among others. Most are descendants of Africans brought to the Americas during the Atlantic slave trade, which lasted almost 300 years. The first Africans arrived as slaves in Brazil in the late 1500s. They were taken primarily from Angola and the Congo to mine Brazil's rich deposits of diamonds and gold, as well as to labor on the sugar plantations. By the early 1800s, there were close to two million slaves in Brazil, making Brazil one of the largest slaveholding nations in the world, second only to the United States. Enslaved Africans produced the wealth that made Brazil an economic and political power in the years to come. And, at the same time, they left their proud and indelible stamp on the culture of Brazil. The African influence is still very much alive today. Eight years ago, two Brazilians, Jelon Vieira and Loramil Macado brought an amazing and fascinating dimension of the African experience in Brazil to the United States for the first time. They call it capoeira. It was kept alive from slavery times through the oral tradition and passed down from one generation to the next. For me, Capoeira is a Brazilian, Afro-Brazilian martial art who came from Africa. When black people came from Africa to Brazil as a slave, was brought from Africa to Brazil as a slave. And there they were forced to work. And they had to develop from like by what the history say, they had they knew this dance called zebra dance, and from the zebra dance they had to turn into capoeira, convert into capoeira, so they would have their freedom. And the capoeira was really an art. It's an art that was born from necessity. They the only thing they had because they weren't allowed to use a weapon, and that time it was very hard to get a weapon. It's not like New York City nowadays. You can buy a gun in any corner, any street corner. You know, that time they had to really, that's why Capoeira is the art of the smart. You had to, it's more playing and it's more gaming, wiser in the head than just kicking. <laughs> It developed into a deadly martial art, characterized by phenomenal agility and lightning speed. With capoeira, the hands and feet of African slaves and rebels were transformed into weapons capable of matching the knife and other weapons. Legends grew up around the ferocious leg fighting of the slaves and its practice as a fighting form was banned on the plantations. But capoeira persisted and was used by slaves to escape and ward off their pursuers was born out of the memories of song and dance that the African carried with him on the slave ships to Brazil. Capoeira enabled me to see just how pretty basically we all have retentions here in the States would be more or less uh, our, the spiritual music, the gospels that we used to, um, 
communicate with one another. There was a system whereby songs were used to warn slaves as they were going along the Underground Railroad. Song was a way which was a hidden, there's a message inv involved in certain words used in the song, a certain sentiment. In the situation in Brazil, it was pretty much the same way. There was, um, well, the freedmen who would, um, the freedmen who would escape by some means from, from the Brazilian plantation would, um, would now set up their conclaves and, uh, and doing so, they would play capoeira. And then they would travel to the plantations and secretly instruct slaves in the art of leg fighting. Since no overseer or slave master would allow this form of fighting to be practiced, they had to invent ways to conceal their training. And that's what capoeira was really came from, necessity. They had to develop this form of fighting so they would free themselves. And the idea of the dancing there is to camouflage because sometimes when they were practicing, they would turn into a dance. So the boss, the captain, would say, oh, they just dance, they just play, but they weren't playing. They really practicing capoeira. So later on, they could escape or take the weapon from the, from the boss. And there would be somebody with uh, this instrument, which is a main instrument in capoeira, the capoeira beating ball, all right, on top of trees. And they would be like, you know, fight without an instrument. But then when the, 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 the police would come, which during this time they'd be walking, they would walk and run with the, in the horse, all right? We call cavalaria. So the, the, I mean, a guy that would be there, like, spying, so, you know, they would let know, the people know when the police would come with the beating ball, change the rhythm. You know, playing a rhythm. Can, can we play that? Sure. sure. The rhythm is cavalaria. So they the, the stop to fight and play, you know, it's, it's the instrument and conga and atabaque, bandeiro, agogo, and singing. So that the, the police, the Portuguese, they didn't know whether, you know, they would do anything to them. That was a dance. It became a dance, all right? So that was the rhythm that, the rhythm that everybody knew that should start to dance. That's a soul of the capoeira. That's a beating ball. That's a soul. Okay. That's control the whole fighting. That says what the fighters should do or they should not do. Uh, it's an instrument play only one string. And uh, here's come the we call this the vigor. Call this the asso. Call this cabasa is a gourd. Call this cachixi the rattle. That's called the paquete. It's like a stick. And the do brown that's done is played by a rock, okay? And uh, in one string, you have uh, several variations. And uh, in this string, you can play over 20 rhythm. Like I'm going to play one, he plays another one. Like the name of the rhythm I'm playing, it's a rhythm called Amazonas. And uh, this rhythm is only for red chords, like you fight with knives, like we didn't talk about the weapons in capoeira, like we use a straight razor or razors or knives. And uh, every time you play this rhythm, you're supposed to fight with knives on your hands. And uh,
fawn flow, right? And uh, the movement that symbolizes the capoeira, I mean the animals, is like you know the monkey, the monkey, the cat, the cat, and the snake. The capoeira angola is like down lower. It's like an animal, you know. And it's very dangerous because we be like upside down all the time, but you know our eyes. It, be, it can be fight against like three, four, five people. It's a good fight. Capoeira struck terror into the hearts of slave masters who attempted to recapture the thousands of runaway and rebel slaves in Brazil. Many slaves fled to the extensive networks of secret camps called cuyombos, which dotted the forest interiors of Brazil and the outskirts of coastal cities. Many of the Cuyombos were led by first-generation Africans who organized Cuyombo life based on social and political concepts that were purely African. The most famous of these camps had over 20,000 inhabitants at its height, and its leader is credited with the rise and spread of capoeira. Zubin, he was a king in Africa, or he was not really a king, I would say a leader of a tribe or something like this, and he was brought also there uh, you know, they were tricked. They faked him in Africa. They brought him to <clears throat> to Brazil as a slave. And uh, when he got to Brazil, he said, no, I'm not going to be a slave. I will never slave there. Why should I be a slave here? And he ran away. And he was the one who really knew the most of the capoeira movements. He went up this hill. That they named the name of the hill Quilombos. Okay, and there they, he formed his army. And uh, every night he used to go farm and f by farm and uh, helping the others run away. And he would bring mm -hmm. all his people to the Quilombos. And there he made the, his arm, okay, to help his freedom. Took over twenty, took uh, over twenty-five years to the Portuguese get up there. Because every time they try and get up there, uphill where they were, was unsuccessful. And then finally, the Dutch at that time was the only who had the most sophisticated weapon. Okay, they finally got up there. And what happened? Zumbin said, "I was never slave before, and they will never be." And what happened? He just killed himself, and all the others followed him. Toda menina baiana tem um santo que Deus dá. E toda menina baiana tem um canto que Deus dá. Toda menina baiana tem um defeito também que Deus dá. You know, that's is talked about that each one, each one of us, is, is more than a thousand. <laughs> you know, we, we have some protected. You know that. You know, we know what what it is. I mean, each one you know for yourself who is with you. And who don't know, they should know. And every Capulist has a protector. And to, for him to have a protector, he got to be involved in that religion, capoeira. OK? Like in the Catholic Church, I would say a Chelsea is St. George, to give an example. Uh, Oshala, it's Jesus Christ. It's like some uh, regular people, ordinary people, they go to church and they believe in that, and we believe in and come to bless. Circle uh, has something to do with the religion of the capoeira. Okay, like the world, it's round, and capoeira is done round. Capoeira is round, never a straight line. And uh, things in a circle run smoother. Okay. The generation nowadays that don't really particularly care about the whole culture. Some of them dies. But that time, when you was a capoeirista, you was really involved in candomblé. Candomblé, maybe you're here in the United States, nobody really knows the word, but they know the mean. By in Puerto Rico, they call Santaria. Haiti, they call voodoo. In Brazil, we call candomblé and it all connects to capoeira. That's where the idea of the circle comes from. It's more energy, it's, it's a closed circle, and everything got to be done there.
Brazil, in Capoeira, are very important. When you can understand the Portuguese language, then the songs that they sing inside the hola become more important. Because the songs also tell you of the desire to be back in Africa, what the experience of, the experience of freedom was all about. say 60% of the third world people in this country, or even my country, 60% they are brainwashed by TV, by the commercial, you know, movie commercial, and they feel like they're really losing touch with their roots, they're forgetting their roots, and the, little by little the roots die, you know, and uh, if it continues like this, we'll be at time, but we won't find nothing authentic. If we, in fact, promoted Capoeira in our own little high schools, if we de devoted time in communi community boards in our high schools, and our junior, junior high schools, and public schools, then if people who promoted Capoeira would do so, then we can, in fact, foster a type of health education program right in our high schools, needing nothing or anything more than ourselves that being the only equipment and desire. And through Capoeira, we can begin to foster things like that. If there is one important lesson in the story of Capoeira, it is that culture is what feeds the will of a people to resist oppression. Culture is your original language. Culture is your traditional music, song, dance. It is the expression of your inner core as a human being. History has proven this so. For the first thing a conqueror does is to stamp out the culture of the people he seeks to dominate. The powerful few who rule have learned this lesson well. We too would do well to learn it and to reinvest our culture with the message of freedom and dignity. The very least we can do is recognize the role culture has played in enabling our African ancestors to escape enslavement and resist oppression. We're from Africa. We're from Africa. We keep Africa in our heart. Africa is manifested in us. Capoeira enables me to reach back and feel Africa. Being in Brazil enables me to feel Africa and feel Capoeira and live like the famous Capoeiristas of old. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah.